Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about how to transcribe using connected speech and how you go about transcribing using a Word document. So we've talked about how to transcribe single words with consonants and vowels. Now we're going to get to connected speech with our transcription project. And I want to give you a little bit um, of ideas on how to transcribe in Microsoft Word, what websites you can use to help out with those IPA phonetic symbols. Um, so let's start right here in our Word document. This is where you typically would be if you're in your home page um, of the Word document. If you go to insert symbol and more symbol, if you click in the subset area, you have the option of IPA extensions. So there are all these different phonemes that we'll be using, and some we won't. Um, so if I wanted to, uh, let's see here, if I wanted to write paper, I could use, let me make this a little bit bigger so you all can see it. Okay, and then I would go back to insert symbols, more symbols, okay, and then we need one more symbol. <clears throat> this is in my history, but you could go back in there. So I have p. A, there needs to be a line above that diphthong. So let's talk about that. We have P, A, P, R. And this is our ER. Remember, I want to make sure that you look at all of those videos that I recorded in the vowel section of our lecture. There are several videos, but I think I broke them up so it's a little easier um, to go through. So if I need to... Uh, if I have a diphthong, which remember is two vowels that we combine into one, um, typically in the English language, we use diphthongs. Now, if you're talking about a native Spanish speaker, uh, in the Spanish language, they don't use diphthongs as much. They actually use more mono, uh, just single straight vowels, um, the true vowels, like A-E-I-O-U. Um, so you'll notice if you have an... Um, a Spanish speaker who has English as a second language, you may notice slight differences in their vowels, and that's because they're using those true vowels of Spanish, uh, of the Spanish language. So if we're using diphthongs, which I would, if you are on the fence about which one to use in this transcription project, go ahead and use a diphthong. Better safe than sorry, okay? Because I want you to see um, where those diphthongs occur. So Again, if you're not quite sure which one you should use, go ahead and use the diphthong for now, just to get practice. So how do I indicate it's a diphthong and not two separate vowels? That's what the line above those vowels is for. So in order to do that, we have two things. We can go to Insert Shapes and click on this line. And I can just put a line. Oops, if it's going to let me. There we go. So I could just put a line above the E and the I, or I can use a program called ipatypeit.org. It's basically an IPA phonetic symbol keyboard. So if you go to this address up here, click on IPA full, that's going to give you more options. And then you can click down here to more, and it'll give you lots of diacritics, which we'll be talking about in Chapter 6. So if I wanted to use, um, use the diphthong EI, the I, um, or the A, excuse me, um, we would transcribe it like this. So we have our slash, so it's pay that a so I find the e up here let's see where is it they only have these ones so go ahead and just type it on your keyboard so we have P and then the e grapheme and then 
before you click this to get that A, you're going to use this kind of half moon shape and then click on the second vowel. So you have to do that in between those two vowels because if I do it either before it looks like this, which is not what we want, or if I do it after and then click on it, it only goes over that I grapheme, okay? And that's not what we want either. So in here you can also find the um, IPA symbols that you need. So I can then, once I've got it typed, go ahead and highlight it, if my computer is going to let me, copy it, move it into that Word document, and let me make it a little bit bigger so you all can see it. When you copy it over, it's going to switch into a different font. Make sure you're in um, Times New Roman because that's going to make sure all of those symbols look like you've seen them. But um, typically you'll have a straight line. Um, this is the only thing I can find in that IPA type it, so I'm okay with that. That still indicates to me that's a diphthong. It's not two separate vowels. Okay, so we have that. That is going to be how you're transcribing those phonemes. Now remember, when we're transcribing, we're transcribing the sounds, the phonemes, not the graphemes. So if I'm looking at the word... Um, let's see, horse, I'm not going to transcribe this E at all. It ends in an E with an E grapheme, but when I transcribe that phonetically, it's going to end in that S sound. So it would look like this. Let me go back here so you guys can see it. Okay. This also has a diphthong. These are our diphthongs. Um, so it is the backwards C plus your R. Oops. Again, make sure you're using that line in between those um, two phonemes for your diphthong. So horse is going to look like this. Let me make it a little bigger for you guys. Okay. See how that's different? I'm looking at the sound that each of those graphemes make, not the graphemes themselves. Sometimes that can be confusing because we think, oh, what, what do we do with that E? I don't hear that E. That's right, you don't. Because when we're talking about graphemes, that's how we write it, you know, if we're in school or writing a report. We're talking about phonetic transcription. So we are looking at the sounds that that word makes, okay? So make sure that you remember that because otherwise that can be really confusing. Um, I'm looking at my list. I had a couple other questions that came up when students came to my office, so I just wanted to make sure I shared that information with everybody. Um, one other question was in the transcription project, what's considered an utterance? So. An utterance basically is when someone's talking, when they take a break to maybe take a breath or they end that sentence, that's an utterance. So we want to go down to the next line with the either um, the next sentence that person says or when another person begins speaking. So if I say, um, I want ice cream, again, I'm not going to transcribe this, but it'll give you an idea as far as utterances. That would be one utterance. I could also say, um, I want ice cream. See how that can be two utterances? It just really depends on how you're talking. Um, now, I'm not going to be a huge stickler on this, but I, do, I did want to give you some practice with utterances. Uh, my biggest thing is that you're not transcribing the entire uh, video in one paragraph. So I don't want one paragraph of everybody's talking. I want a line for each, excuse me, for each utterance and especially for each new talker. 
So for each speaker, make sure they have their own separate line and use their names so I know which person is talking. Okay, let's see. Um, another thing that people had questions on um, were how do you know you're transcribing the right vowel or the right consonant? So the best place I think to start is by practicing. So make sure to practice that you're hearing those sounds correctly before you start this transcription project. I have um, added the vowel chart um, to D2L, and it looks like this. Oops, sorry. This is really helpful. I've made this myself. Um, and so what this shows you is you have front vowels on this side, you have back vowels on this side, and then we have high and low vowels. Um, and so this kind of tells you where in the mouth those vowels are made. But one of the nice things is when you're practicing transcribing, look, have this sheet in front of you, and definitely have it during the transcription project. That's fine. Some of my students, even in grad school, when they're first starting out, when we're transcribing um, maybe articulation, assessments so a child says the word um, on the picture book and then we transcribe it to see if there are any errors sometimes they'll even have this in front of them the first couple of weeks because they're just trying to re-remember all of these sounds um, all of these phonemes so what I would suggest is have this in front of you and the consonant chart and what we'll do is um, when you transcribe and you think you hear an E, go ahead and look on this chart and think, okay, I know it's an E sound. What phoneme makes that sound? Oh, that's right. It's the little I grapheme. Okay. What about if I said hood? Oh, where is that? Oh, it's right here. Okay. So it's this phoneme. Um, but go ahead and use this. Use your resources until you're learning. This is great for practice. Transcribing is hard and it takes a lot of practice and I know I'm not giving you a ton of time to practice in these you know few short weeks of this course so definitely practice as much as you can um, use this excuse me this vowel chart at the bottom it also has all of our diphthongs and our diphthongs or diphthongs you can say it either way and it also gives you a word in order um, in order to remember what sound that phony makes. So if I'm using hide, um, I'm going to use this uh, diphthong. Now I didn't put lines above these. You want to make sure you're putting lines above both the regular diphthongs and the R diphthongs. Okay? Um, the difference between the these two ers, one of them is stressed, typically in single words, and then the other is unstressed, typically seen in multiple syllabic words. Um, let's see what else. I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Let's go through and transcribe a couple, even though I know I've given you practice other places. So how about the word, um, let's see. I'm trying to think of a word, sorry guys. What about house? So if I'm using, here we go, house, that's going to become huh, that ow. Let's look back at our chart. What vowel do you think we would use for house? Ow. If we look through here, how, crowd, so we're going to use this diphthong. So if we go back, we're going to use the A and the U graphemes. And then we have the S at the end. Now remember, we can just use the shapes and create a line above. The only thing you'll want to make sure to watch out for is, let's say in my transcription, I decided to edit something. I forgot something and I needed to add something. Well, watch this. If I'm adding text, Oops. That line stays right where I put it. It's not going to follow me with my diphthong. So then you just have to pick it up and drag it over. So that would be the only downfall of using that versus 
if I use this um, and I'm adding when I'm using the diphthong through um, this kind of half moon through the IPA type it, it goes, it carries with that word. Um, so you don't have to make any changes there. Okay, so I've got that. Let's see. If you are looking, here's our consonant chart. Um, now, with the vowels, I gave you words as ideas. Oops, sorry, guys. Um, for what that sounds like. Most of these consonants you know. You know the P is the P grapheme. You know uh, this phoneme makes the B sound. But you might get a little confused what this one sounds like. This is the TH. What I would suggest is actually going through, print this off, and then make yourself a cheat sheet. And use this when you're transcribing as well. So what I did, let me see if you guys can see this. There we go. Is I highlighted the ones I wasn't, I thought uh, were a little bit more challenging. And I put what it sounds like. So you'll see there's that TH. And then I put examples of words that, um, oops, I'm sorry. I put examples of words so that I remembered what that sound makes. There's a couple more, so you see the sh sound. That J grapheme is the Y sound. But this is really helpful um, to have next to you when you're starting out and you need to remember what all of those new phone sounds those make, okay? So I would suggest when you're transcribing to have your consonant chart out, your vowel chart out, either have a Word document open to use the IPA or use the I, uh, IPA type it. There's also a program called Pepperfont, um, which you're more than welcome to use. However, I will let you know that I've had a lot of trouble with people who have Macs and use Pepperfont. When I get their PDF or their document, it looks like a whole bunch of crazy symbols. So if you're going to use Pepperfont and you have a Mac, I would like you to save it as a PDF versus a Word document, and that should hold all of those symbols um, appropriately so they don't change into crazy characters. The last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about um, was where to go to practice. So how do you practice... Um, let's see here. How do you practice transcribing... Um, besides just doing these transcription projects? Well, I've given you a couple websites that are very helpful and two apps, which I love. So let me try to find my phone. Sorry. It's right over here somewhere. Um, one thing, practice, practice, practice. It takes a long time to get, um, to get good at transcribing so you'll need to practice. So if you're watching TV, grab a pen and paper and try to transcribe what they're saying. Um, when you're in class and you have a few minutes, try to transcribe what your friends are saying. Use a lot of time to practice with your transcription work before you start this project. I think it'll be a lot easier for you. Um, I did want to show you there are several different websites. Here's one of them, this York. Uh, now this is just straight from your syllabus. And when you click on here, if you're forgetting what a certain consonant sounds like, you can actually click. And I'm not sure if you can hear that, but when I click on it, it's actually making that sound for me. So here's the shh. Let me turn it up just a little bit here. Try again. So that's really nice. It also shows you, besides consonants, it has the vowel chart. It has um, diacritics, once we start talking with that. Supra, supra segmentals, which we'll also be talking about. So this is a great website if you need some clarification about what those phonemes sound like. There's also, um, let's look at this sounds, the pronunciation app. This is a free app. 
and if I can get it to pull up on my phone, I'll show you what it looks like. So when you log into this, there are different options. There's a chart, you can practice, and there's a quiz. But in this chart, let's see here, sorry y'all. You can kind of see, they have all the phonemes. And so I can click on one, and if my phone's not on vibrate, you'll be able to hear it. So I clicked on the B, ah. it'll give me the sound, and then if I hold uh, it, cut. so that was the uh. If you hold it down, then it'll give you a word, so you can hear what it sounds like not only as a phoneme by itself, but also in the word. When I get to the practice, I can practice with reading. Hold on, everybody. It's not going to show up very good, I don't think. There we go. So you can read the tra uh, phonetic transcription. You can write it. And you can listen. So if I click on this up here. Ooh, hold on. It's going to say a word, um, and then I get to type in with their keyboard what phonetic symbols I think it is, and then there's a check button. It'll tell you if you're incorrect or not, and then give you the right answer. So that is a great app. There's also another app called Sounds of Speech. It's through the University of Iowa. This one you do have to pay for. Um, the nice thing is if you need some help with categorizing things, um, that's what this one will help you with. So, let me see. I'm able to show you this one. You'll see on here, there's all, you can look by manner, place, and voice, different consonants. Then I can click, like, this is stops. And I can look down at the bottom, and there's a whole bunch of stop consonants. When I click on that, it will actually bring up, um... See if I can get it to work. Ta. It has a diagram, Ta. and it's going to show you exactly how to make that. And that, on this side, there are different options. Here's what, whoop. This gives you directions, written directions, on how exactly to make that sound. There's also example words um, in the initial, medial, and final position of that phoneme, and then a video of someone actually saying it, not just a diagram. Um, so that is a really great app. Remember the cost, but it does cost money for that one. So if you're looking at something free, go ahead and check out the Sounds, uh, Sounds the Pronunciation app and this York website. In addition, if you want extra practice, our book has a um, website, a companion website that is great for practice. So if you look up oops, Clinical Phonetics Companion website, it is going to pull up, you want the fourth edition, this website. On this website, you can look through each of the chapters, hit go and it's going to give some objectives it'll give a quiz so you can practice yourself this will be great practice for the final um, there are flashcards if you want um, that as well so and there are some great links about where to go um, and that York website is actually in here too so there's the talking vowel chart this will give you a lot of different Oops, sorry Um, this will give you a lot of different examples of how to use different vowels. Let me see where we are. Okay, so that just said one of them. I apologize. Um, but this is a great resource as well. So if you have questions regarding your transcription project, please post them on D2L because I'm sure a lot of other people have questions. Um, but I think the goal first is to make sure you're transcribing correctly and check yourself. There are exercises in our book, so if you don't want to go to the website, you can practice right there in your book, and the answers are in the back of the book. They um, give lots of practice with transcribing, 
And then in addition to that, you have all these different apps and websites to practice through. You can just listen to your um, to your friends talk or to people on TV and practice transcribing, but make sure to practice uh, before you attempt to use, uh, before you attempt to start the transcription project, okay? Hopefully that answers some questions. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask, and I look forward to reading your transcription projects. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. I know it's a lot of work. Please put in the time and the effort because it is worth 50 points, but hopefully you all have fun doing it, and I will talk with you soon. Thank you so much.